Oh boy, the third party scene is where it's happening with libgdx and I've got a doozy for you. Texture Typist is a text display library for libgdx that expands the functionality of a label. Labels are usually plain text that you can implement in your scene 2D layout. Plain, boring text. But now, with Tommy Ettinger's excellent library, you can have formatting, text effects, multiple fonts, images in line with fonts, and wild colors. So let me tell you about this Ettinger fellow. He's a mad lad and he commits like a monster. He also maintains a number of must-have add-ons for libgdx. My jam template is basically all his libs. Now this need for a more advanced label has been a long time coming. We've had a few hacks over the years, more than one broken promise, but now it's here and it's real. We've had Rafa's excellent typing label for a while now which gives us the original typing effects, but that's only part of the total solution. Tommy has incorporated typing label and added a bunch of new features and effects. Make sure to read the documentation for Texture Typist to learn how to use the class. It works just like a label, but it takes special tokens to activate the different formatting. Notice that there are two classes. If you want a static label, use Texture Label. If you want the tokens for the typing effects, use the Typing Label from Texture Typist. Make sure your imports are correct. You simply create your Texture Label and implement it in your UI. In the text, I'm going to add a token to underline the sentence. It's that easy. It's a fine idea to just return to this page if you only need a token here or there for emphasis. But if you plan for more extensive use, I have created a utility called Texture Typist Playground to make it easier. It's a new module of Skin Composer, so all you have to do is download the latest version. With this tool, you'll be able to type your text and then apply the tokens by using the widgets in the bar here. To begin, open Skin Composer. Click on Project, then Texture Typist Playground. At this point, you have to choose the font family you're going to use. This choice affects the preview as well as what fonts are available in the drop down menu. You can use the default fonts packaged with Texture Typist. This is great because they are well tested and pre configured for the best scaling. You can also use a font family composed of your own fonts available in your skin. The names you choose for your fonts and skin composer will be used in Playground. We'll just use the standard font family for now. The best way to get started is to just type a sentence here in the code section. As you type, the preview is updated. It's a typing label, so the text is typed onto the screen one letter at a time like an old-timey typewriter. Now you can apply some formatting. The first technique is to highlight what you want to modify and click a button from the toolbar. The animation restarts. Notice that opening and closing tokens were created for this word. There are many typical formatting options available here. They can be applied individually or combined. You can reset all formatting by including the square brackets. All proceeding text will be plain text. One great advantage of Texture Typist is that you can modify the size of text very easily. Click the Size drop down to choose a size. You can choose a pre selected size or type in your own value if you want. Just note that the size has to be a value from 0 to 375. This is a percentage of the original size of the font. And of course, if you upscale a regular font, it's going to look really nasty from the scaling artifacts. Thankfully, the fonts pre-configured for Texture Typist in the standard font family are created at a very large scale so you won't encounter issues. You can choose a font from the drop-down menu. The fonts listed here depend on the option you selected when you started Playground. If you would prefer to use distance field fonts, you can implement the knownfonts.getAllMSDF or getAllSDF methods in your code. You may know of all the pre-configured colors available in libgdx. Red, black, firebrick, chartreuse. These same colors are available directly in Texture Typist as well. Click the drop-down menu and select one from here. If that is too restricting, you can configure your own custom color. Click the drop down and select more colors. 
the color picker displays. Feel free to mix your own color using the HSV or HSL models. You can also select a pre-configured color swatch. To make your own color swatches, click the plus button under Custom. A currently mixed color is added to the list. You can reorder the colors or drag them off to get rid of them. Clicking OK inserts the color tag into your code. Clicking the Effects button brings up the Effects Preview. Choose an effect from the drop-down. The options for each effect are listed here. Type a new value or click any of the buttons to modify the effect. You'll see a live preview with every change you make. And as with the formatting options, if you had a range of text selected, you will get opening and closing tokens. There are a few unique options here to look at for some advanced functionality. Choosing var allows you to create a variable name that can be manipulated through your code later. For example, you can make a player name variable and insert the player's name in context with the story of your game by using the associated method. Events are a little different. An event is triggered when the typing label precedes the event's position in the text. You can see this visually in Playground with the little pop-up that you see. But in your game, you can make this trigger anything you want. It's pretty helpful if you want to trigger certain character portraits or reactions. Playground is great, but how do we implement texture typists in your actual game? Let's shift focus to your coding project for now. Import Texture Typist as dictated by the instructions in the README. The easy way to initialize a Texture Typist label is to create an instance of typing label and pass in a skin or style like you would normally for a regular label. This will not allow you to implement font switching, however. Instead, you can create a font family from your skin. Then set the default font for the label. This way you can access all your fonts by name. Keep in mind that you can only have up to 15 fonts in a font family. This correlates to the skin font family option in Playground. If you choose standard font family, you can use knownfonts.getstandardfamily instead. This matches the standard font family option in Playground. If you try to run this, you'll get an error though. You need to copy the font files from the texture typist project. See the links in the description. Copy over the fonts, images, and license files to the root of your assets folder. So to get the text that you constructed in Playground, you need to switch back and click the copy button under the code field. Go to your code, type a couple quotes, and paste the contents in between them. It works just like the preview now. Implement your variables, events, and other customizations as necessary. You can see that texture typist is much better than a typical label. Rotation actually works without implementing any sort of group transform. Just set the rotation by degrees. Notice that the font family is comprised of the font class, not the bitmap font class. Font is a vast improvement which enables all the new functionality of this lib. If you were to construct a font manually, you can still pass in an existing bitmap font to base the font on. These can come from a skin or directly from an FNT file. Because GDX FreeType produces bitmap fonts, Texture Typist is also fully compatible with FreeType fonts too. Since you're using font, you can do fun things like inserting your own images in line with the text. You'll create a font then call add atlas and select a texture atlas that has the regions you want to include. Then you can call the special region token, square bracket plus the texture region's name and a closing square bracket. If you just want to add emoji to your font though, there is a much easier option. Just call knownfonts.addemoji and pass in your font. Then use the emoji tokens in your string. These are constructed by typing the proper names of the emoji, or you can enter the actual emoji into the text. 
But how do you do that? If you're a Windows user, you can try this in your IDE right now. Look inside the literal string for your label and hold the Windows key and press period. This brings up the emoji pop-up. For Mac, it's Control Command Space, and for Linux, it's some sort of spiritual dance followed by a blood sacrifice depending on your distro. Search for your favorite emoji and select it. Make sure to add the Emoji Atlas, Texture, and License from Texture Typist. You can create your own effects by creating a class that extends effect, though there are a few things you should keep in mind. Modifying the properties of a glyph can be done with some bit manipulation or some convenience methods in font. Glyphs have a bunch of parts all crammed into a long, including the character, font family selection, scaling, styles, and color. Font.extract color lets you get the color out of a glyph as an RGBA int. And font.apply color gets a glyph with the color changed. There's similar extract and apply methods for most parts of a glyph. The easiest way to make an effect is to see the source code of an effect similar to what you want to achieve and modify it. This sets the Y position of a glyph as seen in the ease effect. This modifies the color in the fade effect. After you're done creating your effect, you need to register it so the renderer can detect the tokens. Call typing config.register effect. Honestly, there are enough customizable effects to meet most people's needs. Texture Typist is open to issues requesting specific effects or PRs implementing them. Texture Typist goes beyond just labels. There are many other widgets that implement it. For example, you may want a text button with bold text for emphasis. These work as you expect. Check the wiki for the supported classes, but expect more to come in the future. Thanks for trying Texture Typist out. Make sure to watch Tettinger's GitHub for more libs and awesomeness. And don't forget to check your corners, GDXers. Are you gonna kill us? That depends on if you plan to support developers. Are you selling malware? What do you mean by malware? You're merging with a company that installs adware. What does adware look like? Oh, sorry, sorry. Like that. This is not looking good for you. <laughs>